Hi everyone, in this video of Excited to Chess Dragon, we're going to be looking at a game played between Alexander Kalifman and Alexei Dreyev. This was played in the 1998 President's Cup in Alista, Russia, and without further ado, let's look at this game. Kalifman on the white end starts by playing the move d4, and we have d5 by Dreyev. c4, and now c6. And so far it's the Slav defense. And after knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, and only after the move e6 is played, we now have the semi-slav defense. And now bishop to g5 is played. Uh, pinning the knight, and also getting ready to play moves such as e4 to get more space in the center. h6 is played, and now bishop to h4 by Khalifman, uh, trying to maintain the pressure on the knight. And here, d takes c4. Rev takes the pawn on c4, which is an okay move. And now Khalifman plays e4. So he's obviously trying to play the move e5. Although in positions like this, e5 isn't exactly a threat unless you allow it to be played. So here, if you were to play something like knight b to d7, for instance, then e5 definitely could be a plan of attack. Because now if you try going g5, which is the main idea that black will play, just perhaps take the pawn on g5, and after h takes g5, bishop takes g5, now this knight is again attacked, and perhaps after e takes f6, white not only has a significant space advantage, but also does have a bit of a positional advantage as well. I mean, black's pawns are a bit doubled, and white could uh, prove that the game is either equal, or it would be slightly better for black, which doesn't give black too much of an advantage. So... Definitely, e4 is a threat if you, uh, if it is left unattended to, but Dreyev plays the move g5, and he wants to kick the bishop away from the diagonal, and the bishop goes to g3. And here the move b5 is played, which tries to maintain the defense of the c4 pawn. Bishop to e2, and this is actually known as the anti-Moscow gambit of the semi-slav defense. And... Basically, it's to give up the c4 pawn in order to get more development than your opponent. And as we see here, Khalifman definitely does have a lot more development to, compared to Dreyev. So we have bishop to b7, uh, fianchettoing the bishop on the long diagonal, and the plan is to essentially play the move a6, and then to go c5, because then the e4 pawn is very weak. And when the bishop gets unleashed on this very long diagonal, it can obviously be very beneficial for Drev. His extra pawn will actually mean something. So h4 and now g4. Drev advances his pawn because he doesn't really want to capture on h4 and allow the dark squared bishop to go back to the square where it was very powerful. But not only that, because the g file would be completely opened and it would be opened in Khalifman's favor. So Drev decides not to really touch that side of the board and decides to keep it closed which is the better idea than opening it up. So, knight to e5, uh, now there's a threat towards the g4 pawn, but before tending to the attack towards the g4 pawn, Dreyev plays b4 and attacks the knight on c3. Although this does weaken the c4 pawn and the g4 pawn is also weak, so now knight to a4, but the e4 pawn falls, so you have to be aware of that. However, there are weaknesses everywhere in the position, and maybe just playing a defensive move like h5 instead of going b4 could have been a better decision. So b4, knight a4, knight takes e4, and now the pawn on c4 is captured. And okay, now Dreyev's pawns are undoubled. But now g4 is also being threatened. And if you try to defend g4 by going f5, then obviously your e6 pawn is going to be captured next. So knight takes g3, uh, capturing the bishop, and after f takes g3, knight to d7. Um, this would have been the correct idea if the king side was a lot more developed, uh, if not a lot more uh, castled and safe. Uh, however, when this knight d7 move is played, um, it, the king side is not the safest place to be on, and that too, it's not completely developed. As we can see, the dark squared bishop has not moved from its original square. And if you compare Dreyev's position to Khalifman's, then obviously you see a lot of differences. Um, and 
the move knight d7 itself is a very big mistake, and a better approach would definitely have been to play something like bishop to d6 and trying to get rid of this knight. And you want to continue developing your pieces, and with bishop to d6, that is exactly what Dreyev wants to do. In fact, he wants to remove this knight from the powerful e5 square, and then basically, if this queen does not move from the d1 square, he wants to trade queens, castle, and then get his pieces out, and then it's just going to be an easy win for Dreyev. However, that's not what Dreyev played. He played knight to d7 instead, and after this move was played, Khalifman found a very brilliant way of attacking. And can you find out how? So Khalifman definitely could just take the pawn on g4, and okay, yes, he might have more development, but Drev can easily come back into the game by developing the queen to e7, maybe just castling queenside, and there's not really going to be any advantage if knight takes g4 is going to be played. So instead, the move that was played after this knight to d7 move was actually just knight takes f7. Capturing the pawn and weakening the defenses around Dreyev's king. And especially the e6 pawn, that is the weakest point in Dreyev's position. And after just a simple castle by Khalifman, you can see, first of all, how exposed the king is, but secondly, how underdeveloped Black's king is as well. And every single piece needs to be playing a role in this game. And at the moment, we can see that this bishop isn't doing anything, this rook on h8 and this rook on a8, they're both not doing anything either. And neither is the queen on d8. So there's just a huge gap in the development that we can see from both players' perspective. So king takes f7 and queen takes g4. Obviously, if you do not defend the e6 pawn, then e6 is going to fall and with that, probably the entire game. So queen to e7, defending, but this is where we really see how wonderfully Khalifman takes advantage of the position. He just castles kingside, and this also comes with check. And this move is very powerful because you develop another piece, and that too, it comes with tempo. Usually, if you want to develop a piece, you need to make sure that your enemy cannot really move another piece and develop from their own side, Otherwise, it's not really going to be the best position because they have chances of defending as well. So with castles, kingside, with check, Khalifman brings another piece into the game. And he also is now threatening a lot of moves, such as bringing the queen into g6 and then bringing the rook into f7 after that. So the king goes back to e8, but now bishop takes e6. The bishop goes to c8 to defend the knight on d7 and rook 8 e1. And you can now just see how underdeveloped Dreyev is, and now there are threats coming towards him, such as bishop to f7, and then capturing the queen. So king to d8, sidestepping all of this. Uh, since the threat was also to play bishop takes d7 check, and then capturing the queen next, because it would come with tempo. So that's why king to d8, and now if you actually do play bishop takes d7, then Dreyev may actually be able to solve all of his problems by taking with the queen. After this, the advantages just went to Dreyev. And Khalifman has nothing here, since his knight is rather misplaced, and these bishops can now get activated fairly quickly. So, do not take the knight. Instead, play d5. Open up more lines towards the king. And here, unfortunately, you cannot take the pawn, because that would allow bishop takes d5, and now not only is there an attack towards your queen, there's also an attack towards this rook on a8. And that's just it. You're going to either lose a lot of material, or your king is stranded in the center, or both in this specific case. So that's why queen g7, trying to trade the queens off, and that's the correct idea. However, d takes c6. And weirdly enough, Khalifman is open to having a queen trade on the board, because he knows how underdeveloped Dreyev is. So we have a queen trade, which may seem like it was a big mistake, because obviously when you're up material as the side who is defending, you want to trade more pieces off the board. And if you're the side that is down material, 
then you don't want to trade more pieces off because then it'll go into an endgame quicker and you're not going to have as many pieces to attack slash mate your opponent. So why does Khalifman do this? Well, we'll find out. So knight to b6. And now if you were playing as Alexander Khalifman here, what would you do? The move that Khalifman played is actually stunning. He played the move rook to f7. And this is such a creative idea because he is hanging both of his minor pieces. The bishop on g4 is hanging, and so is the knight on a4. However, neither of those pieces can even be touched. Because if they are captured, then it's going to end up in checkmate. If the knight is captured, it's a direct checkmate by playing c7, and the bishop nicely guards this diagonal, and the rook guards the pawn, and the rook also guards the e8 square. If you were to take the bishop instead, then there's still c7 check, the king will go to c8, and now the move knight b6 check. And here, you can either take the knight, or you could go king to b7. Uh, taking the knight would allow rook to e8 check, king goes to b7, and now just c8 queen, and this is actually just checkmate. And if you do not take the knight, instead going king to b7, then c8 queen is enough to win. Because after the king captures on b6, since it is double check, you can just go rook to b7 check. Uh, this is perhaps the quickest way to win, and just get a ladder checkmate. And does Dreyev have anything to do about this? Absolutely not. So, you can't take either minor piece, and that's why after rook to f7 was played, Dreyev decided to develop a minor piece instead. So he played bishop to d6, and now what did Khalifman play? Of course, now c7 check isn't as potent as it was before, so Khalifman needs to start coming up with something quick, otherwise he's most likely going to lose the game. So what does he do? He plays knight takes b6. He takes the knight, because if you play bishop takes g4 here, then obviously you're losing your rook. And if a takes b6 is played, which is what happened in the game, now we have the move c7 check. A very brilliant move, which forces the bishop to take the pawn. There is no other option but to take the pawn. And after the pawn is captured, rook to d1 check. And here you might think that there is actually something still left for Dreyev, because, okay, you cannot move the bishop on c7 to block on d6, because obviously you're just going to lose material. You can't block with the bishop, because that's still going to lose material, and may even lead to checkmate. But what happens if you move the king to e8? Because you attack the rook, but you're also attacking this bishop. And if perhaps Dreyev could have traded those bishops off, then maybe there is actually something left in store for him. I mean, maybe he might not lose the game. However, Khalifman doesn't take the bishop, and he doesn't take this bishop either. He instead plays the move bishop to h5. And after this bishop h5 move is played, there's obviously discoveries being threatened, such as rook takes c7, even rook to h7 is a discovery threat, Maybe even bringing this rook onto the e-file is also a threat, although it's not a discovery, but still, it's a very powerful threat. So, Dreyev tried one last trick here before he eventually resigned, and that was to deflect the bishop's defense of the rook. Now, after this bishop g4 move, obviously capturing the bishop would allow the move king takes f7, Although, if you think about it, that position wouldn't really be terrible. I mean, after king takes f7, rook d7 check, king to f6, rook takes c7. Okay, yes, you're down the exchange, but it's not the worst position you could possibly get. In fact, I actually think that this position isn't too bad. Because Khalifman does have a lot of activity, and he does have some extra material that compensates for his exchange. So... Maybe Khalifman isn't as bad in this position as you might think he is. However, Khalifman found a better way to actually win material rather than just keeping the material equal. He found the move rook to h7 check. And he's attacking the rook on h8. 
and he's checking the king, so obviously you can either take the bishop, uh, you could just play king to f8, and those are the only two moves. So, Drev had to take the bishop, and now Khalifman takes the rook on h8, king to e7, and Drev still had a slight glimmer of hope, because, of course, Khalifman can play rook takes a8, and he can blunder the game by letting Drev play bishop takes d1, in which there are two bishops against the rook. And okay, there may be two extra pawns for Khalifman, but there are still chances that Drev has of winning the game. Or at least drawing it, and not allowing Khalifman to win. However, that's not what Khalifman did, and after this king to e7 move, he played the final move of the game, and after this was played, Drev resigned the game. So, what did Khalifman play here? Okay, so Khalifman played the move rook to e1 check, and this is the winning move, because after this check, you are forcing the king to move, the rook on a8 is still hanging, and after the king moves anywhere, let's say it goes to f7, you lose the rook on a8. And now you're just down two exchanges as black. Okay, yes, you can grab this pawn on g3, but after, say, rook f1 check, and now the king goes to e7, simply rook to h8 can be played. And there's nothing that Drev can actually do here, since the h6 pawn is going to most likely be lost. But not only that, the rooks can be a lot more cooperative than the bishop pair. So this is just going to be an easy win for Khalifman. That's why after the move, rook to e1 check was played, Drev resigned the game, and a very good victory for Alexander Khalifman. So I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please let me know in the comment section, and stay tuned for more chess.